Yeah, if you need to take a break, you better go get your water now. Oh, boy. I love y'all. Don't go more water. Amazing grace. Shall I always be my song of praise? For it was grace.
lifted up and always something going on, but we're trying to find answers to the questions that life gives us and we are in a situation that we're trying to figure out how to get out of and we look for people full of answers and I've come to discover that we're always searching the wrong place for the answers. People give you their opinion about so much stuff. And I believe that even when you come to church sometimes, you find yourself getting the opinion of somebody. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if we really want the answer, if we would really go to the source right. for the answer. All right. In this, in this chapter 12, Jesus begins, uh, this John begins to reveal to us some events that was taking place. It was six days before the feast of the Passover, and Jesus finds himself at the house of some of his dear friends. He stops by, if you go back and read that chapter, it opens up with Jesus at the house of his good friend Lazarus and Mary and Martha, his, these, are, these are his friends, and he stopped by and visited them on his way to Jerusalem because Jerusalem is 1.5 miles east of Bethany. He stops there on his way before he goes up to the feast. Mm -hmm. Now, now y'all know Lazarus. Do y'all know Lazarus? Anybody here don't know Lazarus? But just in case somebody don't, because you don't like to respond to the preacher, it's all right if you talk back to me. I'm not nervous. <laughs> but Lazarus was, was one of his friends, and, and, and Lazarus had died one day. And Jesus delayed going to see him because he had something he wanted to show the people. And when he got there, Mary and Martha was all upset because he didn't come time he heard. You know how it is when you... Here's somebody in the hospital that you want, like my brother want to rush on up there so, you know, you can see him. Well, Jesus, he didn't do that. Jesus, he said, ain't no, Harry, ain't no emergency to me. You know, your emergency don't make an emergency for me. You know, I'm, you know, I'm just sorry. You know, you know. And so, and on that time when he went, he raised him from the dead. So he's going back to check on old Lazarus. Okay. He gets there and asks you. Martha, she's been in the kitchen, so she cooks up a real good meal. And uh, Mary, she this, this particular time, she anoints his feet and wipes them with her hair. And because every time Jesus comes to town, you know it's always around. I don't know how big a city Bethany was, but anyway, the word got out, so folks just dropped by. You know, they just dropped by because Jesus was in town. You know, I'm over at my brother's house, and you know, you just drop by, you know, because I'm in town. So they just drop by because Jesus was in town. But you know what the Bible said? They didn't just drop by to see Jesus. They wanted to see Lazarus too. Because they knew Lazarus had been raised from the dead. And so they wanted to see both of them. And so they see both of them. Then after the little visit, Jesus gets up and he goes on to the feast. He goes on up to Jerusalem and while he's up in Jerusalem, they was already contemplating, trying to think in their mind, I wonder if Jesus is going to come. Right. These are the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They, and the reason why they was wondering, because they was trying to figure out how they were going to be able to arrest him. Because they needed to put him to death because he's causing too much problems. He's causing them too much headache. And they got to get rid of this fellow. And not only do we need to get rid of Jesus, but we need to get rid of this last because of what he does for Lazarus, he didn't turn the whole world upside down. They all go on after him. So we don't have to get rid of 
Bible and follow me along. I'm just telling your story today. Because Jesus was doing some things. Okay? And then after that, Jesus, they, they told him, you know how y'all, you know, sometimes when somebody say, well, I need to meet with certain somebody, and they went and told Jesus, these fellas want to see you. And Jesus said, well, you know what? I ain't even got time for them right now. Because my time is at hand. And he began to tell them of what death that he was going to have and that things was coming to an end. And they heard a voice that came out from heaven. And Jesus told them, the voice didn't come for me, but the voice came for your sake. And so oftentimes when God speaks to us, because he's still a speaking God, when he speaks, he's speaking for your benefit. And sometimes just like these people in the 12th chapter, we misinterpret the voice. And we try to analyze the voice. And we try to explain the voice away. And Jesus began to talk to them. And he gave them a command. He gave them some instructions that I, if I be lifted up from the earth. And I will draw all men unto me in the King James. Now let me tell you this. When you see in the scripture, and we I, I told my brother this on last night. When you read in the scripture, it is a general text that applies to all people. It's not talking about gender. What he say? If you, I would draw all men unto me. He's not talking about gender. He's talking about humankind. Now, when they wrote the Bible in the days that they wrote the Bible, most literature was gender slanted. So you can't take things in the Bible literally. Okay, I'll just say, because I'm probably going to teach this morning. Y'all been shouting. I don't know what my brother got. I don't know what was in his coffee. <laughs> this morning. But I'm praying for him. Y'all may need to stop having donuts after Sunday school. Okay. And so, and I'm thankful that there are a couple of business now. You know, I can tune up and I can do a whole lot of things. But I'm going to be here to the Spirit of God. So I, I'm going to teach this lesson. It ain't going to really be too long. I'm going to get to my points. I got about five, six of them. So it's going to be helpful. Because so oftentimes we miss God when He's speaking. Because the people came to see Jesus because of what He did. And even when they came to see him, some of them didn't believe him. They just showed up. Some of them came and wanted to kill him, but they showed up. And so we have to be very clear that we understand who we lifting and are we lifting. And one of the things we have to realize is he didn't call us to draw. And so many churches are trying to draw. They put on programs. They put on annual days. They're trying to draw the crowd. They're trying to draw attention. You know, big bulletin boards and everything. So they're trying to draw. And most of the time, they're not even trying to draw people to Jesus. They're trying to draw people to the local church. Or they're trying to draw the people to them. Yeah. And so that's the reason why I want to make sure in this last day that we begin to understand. Because if we take that scripture to be literal, that if, if I draw all men unto me, then that means Jesus don't save women. If we take the, the scripture literally, and to, to, and to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even them that believe, that means he don't save nobody but men. Okay, but the mouth is in the church. That's all right. I don't mind about the mouth being in the church. I'm not there. Amen. Amen. Okay. But he said God so loved the world. Okay, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Come and God on. forbid that we Americans think we have a corner market on Christianity. All right. Jesus. And I would tell folks, Jesus was not a Christian. And he wasn't a Catholic. All right. He was a Jew. All right, all day long. And so what we have to learn is we have to learn to take our Bible that we got from King 
Amen. 